That's exactly right. Of course, President Trump is very critical of President Obama for overusing executive power, expanding uh, the definition of what a president can really do, and yet he's had to use some of that himself. He, like President Obama, was, is very frustrated with Congress. As you point out, the difference is this is the beginning of his presidency and also with a Congress of his own party. So that frustration is rather stark that he's turned to his executive power to do that. On the other hand, what his White House would tell you is he's using executive power to undo uh, what were uh, overly expansive executive power actions by his predecessor. He he was undoing the DACA program. He's undoing uh, some of the health care things that the president of the previous president had done using executive authority uh, and the Iran deal. Uh, so far, he hasn't actually you know completely canceled all of those things, but he's taken action toward that end. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about an article in Vanity Fair. It was titled, I Hate Everyone in the White House. Trump seethes as, as advisors fear the president is unraveling. Peter, based on what you're seeing, what you're hearing as you cover the White House, is there any truth to that? Well, look, this is a White House that is full of drama and full of, uh, uh, you know, anger and frustration and, and, and turmoil and, and rivalries and uh, a constant sense of, of uh, turmoil. It's a turbulent place. And, and you see a president who's unhappy with uh, his first few months in office, unhappy with Congress, unhappy with some of the advisors he's brought in. You see team around him that has felt very uh, beset either by a president who, you know, doesn't follow the script or by each other in the various rivalries for power, influence, and position. Some of that has gotten better under John Kelly, the new chief of staff. He's kind of put a clamp down on, on some of the uh, uh, more chaotic elements of the presidency that we saw in the first few months. But there's still a real undercurrent of uh, discontent in this White House, both on the part of the president and the people around him. Look, you mentioned Kelly. He had to make a surprise, or did make, we should say, a surprise appearance at a press briefing this week. Let's take a listen to some of what he said. Although I read it all the time, uh, pretty consistently, I, I'm not quitting today. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't believe, and I just talked to the president, I don't think I'm being fired today. Um, and uh, I'm not so frustrated in this job that uh, I'm thinking of leaving. I would tell you, this is the hardest job I've ever had. Uh, this is, in my view, the most important job I ever had. I mean, what does this say to you? How unusual is this to hear a White House chief of staff feeling the need to make these kinds of remarks in the first place? Well, this is the second time we've had a major uh, figure in this administration come out in the course of two weeks to say, no, I'm not resigning. Remember, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson did the same thing just about a week earlier. And you're right, it is extraordinary. And listen to what he said. Listen to the modifier. He said, I'm not so frustrated that I'm going to leave. He didn't say that he wasn't frustrated. He just said, I'm not so frustrated that I'm going to leave. Of course, it's a tough job. It's a tough job under any circumstance. This is a president who doesn't make it particularly easy by sort of, uh, you know, launching off new crusades, various uh, jihads, various uh, campaigns uh, via Twitter on any given morning. Uh, certainly, John Kelly spent one of his days, for instance, last week calming down the governor of Puerto Rico after the president has seemed to suggest that he might pull federal resources out at some point soon after that hurricane that they've been suffering. Mm -hmm. So you, as a chief of staff, as any uh, advisor in this White House knows, uh, you're, you're not going to be able to control President Trump. He, he is who he is. He does what he does. He believes that's how he got to the White House in the first place, and he doesn't need people to tell him what to do. So the best you can do as a staffer in that circumstance is, is manage the situation and, uh, you know, keep things under control as best you can. Well, part of the way he got to the White House, though, was, of course, being uh, very much part of the American culture. And you write another article this week. It's got the headline for Trump, the reality show has never ended. That refers first to the president's feud with Republican Senator Bob Corker, and it reads, quote, he called out the offending senator for being short and sounding like a fool. He challenged the secretary of state to an IQ contest and insisted he would win. He celebrated the downfall of a critic who was suspended from her job, and his first wife and third wife waged a public war of words over who was really his first lady. Are there elements of this that are strategic, or is this just more example of internal frustrations that the public gets to see and hear? Well, look, this is a president who spent 14 years, of course, uh, hosting a reality television show. What he understands is how to keep uh, the storylines fresh, how to how to keep uh, the audience coming back for more. He's a he's a he's a showman in some ways, and I think that uh, uh, part of what he does is, is to kind of you know keep. Uh, keep people on edge. He, he, there's always this sort of reality show element to his White House. Who might be in? Who might be out? Who might be voted off the island next? Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to
to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.